do know with the intersection, we have a very, very strong uh, emphasis on first generation uh, college students. And we are particularly happy that we not only put a focus on our first generation college students, but also our faculty and staff. And uh, today we have joining us uh, Dean Robert Omer, who is the Dean of the uh, College of Greenspun of Urban Affairs. And he is a first generation student uh, or was a first generation student. And now obviously someone who has moved up those faculty ranks to, to have the honor of being a Dean. Being interviewed, he's going to be interviewed by Kyron Smith Coleman. We are extremely proud of Kyron, who is also a first generation student. And he is one of our TIPS mentors, or uh, what we call our uh, the Intersection Partners Mentor Program. And uh, we're extremely happy with him. And he is also uh, a senior in the College of Urban Affairs. And so we felt like that this was just perfect uh, for this interview to, to occur. So I am going to let these two very uh, energetic men take this over. And uh, thank you, Dean Omer, for being here with us this morning. Uh, we really appreciate you. So well, thank, thank you, you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Welcome to everybody. I'm really excited about the conversation with Karen. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm honored to be here. To be, a, I'm glad they they chose me to, to do it. I was, you know, I was. I, I, we already had a rapport before from uh from our uh, intersection brunch that we had, and and ever since then I've been wanting to sit down and talk to him. So finally to get a chance to talk to him and then be able to interview him is actually really great. So I'm glad I'm here today. So uh, yeah, we just started off now. All right. Uh, so yeah, my my first question for you, uh, Dean Armour, is uh, how does first generation first generation relate to your job? Yeah, Karen, I, you know, this is uh, a really good opportunity Two first generation uh, college students talking to one another. Um, and, you know, it's interesting when I started college, I had no idea what college was going to be like. Uh, and I think you and I have shared this, uh, some of these yeah. initial conversations, right? Um, I didn't know any college professors, um, and I, I hadn't been on a college campus before I um, before I went to get my undergraduate degree. And so, it's very it's a unique experience, and it's a very different experience. Um, for me, my uh, my first couple of years were a humbling experience on a college campus, uh, mm. learning a lot, and uh, I think we share that a lot as uh, as well, Karen. But but it was also inspiring to me. And so everything that I do every day as a dean is informed by those experiences that I had as a first generation college student, as a freshman and sophomore, junior and senior. Um, you know, uh, just understanding what it's like to be a, uh, a college student is critical to my job, right? You know, my goal is uh, when I tell people um, and I, I talk to our faculty and our staff, you know, I tell them that every student that's in the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs and at UNLV is somebody's sister, brother, mother, aunt, uncle, right? These are real people that are trying to get forward in their lives. And, um, and going to college changed my life and it changed my children's lives. I have, uh, my wife and I have two daughters, uh, Ali and Isla that are 14 and 11, um, and their lives are completely changed by, by what I was able to learn and the support I was able to get on a, on a college campus. Uh, they've been on all kinds of college campuses, Kyron, and uh, <laughs> completely different existence than I did. So when you ask me that question, it's such a powerful question for me, and it's such an important question because Everything that I do every day is informed by being a first generation college student and to know what's at stake uh, and any support that I can give and any any anything that I can do to help uh, like I was helped um, as a first generation college student. It changed my life. So it's everything. Right. I, I you know, you know, that's uh, that's what it means to me. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, that was. uh <laughs> Yeah, you're right. We both share that in common of coming to college and just being very starstruck at the whole like thing, especially me coming from a very small school 
people in a place that was very local where I knew everybody. So you come to a place you don't know anyone. And this, this is a very, you know, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm here. Like, what is going on? What is this? I don't understand that. Is there so much going on at once? You kind of just kind of stop yourself in the, in the moment and kind of kind of really take it all in. So, yeah, I really I really understand that. Yeah. And uh, you kind of answered my second question. I was going to ask you, I was going to say, how did that relate to you and your family? And but you told me like your daughters, they've been they've been at you know, college campuses all the time, you know, so it's, <laughs> so it's really not. So really, they never they're not going to feel the same way that you felt when you first came in, because they've been around it so much that to them being on college, is probably like uh, another college, probably, you know, just like a, it's like like a second home almost being on a college campus. So, yeah, that's right. That's pretty great. OK, it's really um, true. Aaron, it's really true. And I think they'll experience different challenges because everybody experiences challenges. Yeah. Right. But I remember my oldest daughter one time saying to me, you know, dad, it seems like everybody's got a Ph.D. <laughs> because because people that were coming over and, and people that she knew, I mean, it, it was so random where I never I never came in contact ever with somebody who was a professor. She had all these different contacts with people that uh, that had advanced degrees. And so. Uh, yeah, your your level of comfortability is different, and um, and your understanding of of the experience is different, mm -hmm. and um, and that's good. I I I'm, I'm happy that they have the experiences. They'll have their own challenges, Karen, as we all do. <laughs> uh, but uh, but no, um, that was certainly not my experience, and uh, and I don't think it was your experience either. No, I, I, I really feel like what your daughter is saying, like you feel like almost everybody got a PhD, but from in my case, I feel like everybody I know is going to, is going to graduate school. So like, and I'm, <laughs> and my mom here right now, I know she thinking she's like, yeah, you know, graduate school, son, you know, and I'm, and, I, and I'm looking at everybody else like, man, y'all want to go to school again? Like we just did four years of this and, I, and it was like, I mean, it was a great experience, but it wasn't the best all the time, you know? So like just me thinking about coming back and doing like graduate school and doing all that. So I kind of feel like what she's saying like it seemed like everybody is going to you know the extra mile to go there and i'm still stuck on like man i just went through four years in this huge college how can i do this again you know so man, that's really crazy to me so it's who uh, you're with, right kyron it's who you're connected with and when yeah. you're in these circles like you said uh that's what college does right it it, it it's about relationships right uh i'm so happy that we're connected um and that you're we talk about you know, we were talking about Dr. Bloomfield earlier and and, and and Dr. Flores and, you know, it's these networks and these connections that then shape us and and help support us. And uh, and they do skew our lives a little bit sometimes as well when you think, well, everybody's going on to get a graduate degree. Well, <laughs> that's probably not true, but it's who you're connected to. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and those things matter. Yeah, I mean, but I actually do. Um really appreciate that environment too because it, it kind of pushes you in a way like you I mean because that and it's not just it's not just people getting the bachelor's degree say yeah i'm not coming back but you got so many people around you which i would think that would influence like your daughter too like seeing that some people got phds like well i feel like i need to do that extra mile too it kind of pushes you to be a little better in a way you know i think it does uh i think it really does i think um everybody's got to choose what they want to do mm -hmm. Right. And so um, I think, like you're saying, you know, when you see other people going to get master's degrees, then you think, well, maybe I should do that. But but that may or may not be your passion. Yeah. Right. And I think when, when it's something with degrees, um, you know, we were sitting and watching TV as a family the other night and, uh, and we were watching a TV show where somebody had a Ph.D., and, you know, the kids ask again, well, how long does it take to get that? And, and then one of them was like, well, you know, maybe I should do that as well. And I said, you know, it's, it's not doing it just to do it. You have to have a passion for these things as well. And, and if you do, that's great. But you can also use your intelligence and your expertise in other areas of life as well and, and, uh, and do equally impressive and, uh, and exciting things. Okay. Uh, my next question for you was, uh, what has been, what has, what has the impact of first generation have on our on universities and communities? What do you think is the impact that it has, it has had on our university community? Yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, I love 
and I have chosen universities to be at that are the most inclusive and engaging. I think universities oftentimes see themselves and pride themselves on being the most exclusive, right? The, mm -hmm. the Stanford's are the toughest to get into and people yeah. are, are really excited about that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited about being at a university like UNLV that's one of the most diverse, that's one of the most inclusive, right? And it's the kind of, of uh, place that I would have loved to have come as a student. And it's one I'm proud to work at because it's about changing the community that you're in. It's about lifting your community up. It's about supporting your community. Um, we have a, a MGM college opportunity program where students from, from MGM resorts and have an opportunity to get their tuition paid. And, and we work with those students as they're working in their jobs to get a college degree and a college education at the same time. And I know other resorts have, uh, have some other programs like that as well. But this is an incredible community, and it's a very diverse community. Um, so I love the fact that, um, for instance, in the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs, you know, we we talk about careers and jobs in in freshman level classes. What type of job you can get? What kind of career you can get? How college can be practical and and can help you with your personal and professional life? Right? You're getting a communication degree. Uh, I've got a communication degree. Right. Uh, you learn about interpersonal communication, right? You learn about small group communication. You learn about how to manage conflict effectively. I mean, you and I were talking earlier. These are some of the, the most important skills and knowledge in our society that we need today to yeah. overcome some of the obstacles and challenges we have. So college is a place where people can come to campus and, and they, can, they can work on their relationship with their partner or their friends. They can learn how to manage conflict. They can learn how to overcome disagreements. Uh, Dr. Barlow just mentioned uh, earlier that one of the communication professors was in talking about, you know, diversity and how we can, how we can work together and, and become better together. So universities are exciting places for all people. Um, I love that they're, that UNLV is inclusive, uh, that it's welcoming of, 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 first generation and, and all people. And then we come together and learn from each other. Uh, it's an incredible, exciting place to be. And, um, and it makes me excited to come to work every day when we have those diverse perspectives and backgrounds and experiences that we can draw upon. Yeah, I really, that's, yeah, I, I really like that answer because it's definitely, I think a lot of the things we have going on today could be just solved like very simple communication, which is, which I really feel like is a really, really big impact. I mean, and uh, my mother, she, you can ask if you want to, she'd tell you that I, I can, my communication is, what is, is something I've been doing ever since I was a, a child, a baby, I've always been communicating, but I, but I always know that there's, it's always a, a, a way in like of, of being able to understand where someone is coming from or where, or how are you, how are you interpreting what this person is saying to be able to communicate the information? Because everything that we go through, like we have to communicate and, Either if it's nonverbal or verbal, you know, some type of communication is, is what we need. So the impact of that, and then us being from different communities, different different places around the world. Because from here, you meet people from England, you meet people from Australia, you meet people from from uh, from Africa, you meet somebody that that from New York, you know, or somebody is from Cali, or somebody, from, you know, it's so many so many different places, so many different types of communication, and you had to come together and understand like what like like what is your like, how is your culture, what is your culture like to be able to really. Uh, build that build up these relationships here with people because I, I i have friends that I, I never thought i have a friend from england like that's that's crazy to me to be sitting here at unlv and like wow like wow i know somebody from england and australia that's crazy to me. so but yeah definitely the impact of that I, I feel just even even our even our presidential situation you know, stuff like that just you know simple things i feel will be very simple simply um, solved simpler by just communication so yeah I think you're right. And I think modeling that communication, which you do exceptionally well, Kyron, uh, and showing people how it can be done and developing those relationships in meaningful ways and, and bridging differences and finding common ground. And those are, those are, the, those are the tools of the day, right? And we see that, mm -hmm. right? We see how people struggle, but we also see role models and leaders at, at, at other levels and, and where, where people are really doing that and doing it well. College campuses can be a place where, where we really model those behaviors and professors and students um, can work together to show communities and to show 
uh, states and countries um, how we can do that productively. Yeah. Uh, how do you so? Well, I mean, you already kind of answered. My next question is going to be: How do you think it? How do you think it should be? How, what, what do you What do you think the the impact should be on like on our communities and universe? But you, already, I mean, you already kind of really answered that. So, well, I, so, I, I don't mind talking some more about it, Karen. Oh, okay, well, hey, go ahead. Then okay, I'm not going to stop you. Keep going. You tell me a little bit. What What do you think? I mean, you're around here a lot. What What should we be doing um, to help our communities more? I mean, you know. And I could talk about some of the things that we're doing in the college, but what do you think about ways in which universities and, 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 and all of us working together can make a difference in our community? Well, I know, I know there are a lot of people that, that I know that are not, that are not as social as like I would be, like going out to go see people and meet people. Because okay. I, I realized that when I first came here, if you don't go out and try to go have a social environment, you don't, it's, it's not going to just fall in your laps. Like, because right. I, because I would, I try to compare it to from my, my other college, my junior college, where it was it was obviously way smaller, but everybody knew everybody. It was a very social place. So we it, we had a section at the school that was called the bridge. It connected um, the the older part of the school to the newer part, and in the middle it was a it was like a common area, and everybody would go there and just chill. It'd be people you never even met before, and they'll start talking to you. So when I came to UNLV, I was expecting like, oh, it's a bigger school now. This is gonna be a way bigger, you know, broader, but. No, you come to school, people come to school and leave. So it, even, and we do have a lot of social events at school, like Premier, or we got like, or different like vent, uh, vendors that come here and do like pop-up shops, like the, to, you know, to create some type of social environment. But even then I don't see as much people like connecting, like like how I was at my at my older school, you know? So I, I mean, I, I feel like we can, it could be, we could strive more to be more social in school because outside of school, everybody is social. It's yeah. a totally different. It's just crazy. While we're in school, we all see each other. We wait until we leave and go to to wherever we go, either a party or we might meet at somebody's house. I'm like, oh, I had class with this person. I didn't even know you knew him. Like it just kind of fought that now outside of school is totally different. But here, I feel like when we're in school, it should be more of a, a social area. You know, some it should I feel like it's something that I, I can't think of like a particular idea on top of my head right now, but I feel like it should be something that that kind of I don't want to say forces in a social way, but I'm saying it kind of just it's more so of like if you're around here more often, it's just going to fall in your lap type of environment. You know, like something like somebody's going to come up to you and, and make you a part of the group or make you a part of the conversation. Like like how I was in my older college. I think that's right, Karen. And I think, you know, what you're saying to me sounds like you've got to be a part of your community. You got yeah. to be, you be present. Right. Um, you're present in the college, in the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs and at UNLV through Dr. Barlow's uh, um, intersection um, group as well. And you're reaching out to people, right? And you're including people and engaging people. And that's what, that's what effective and great communities are, right? In the college, we talk about resilient communities. We want communities to be resilient. Well, we know that one of the, the top metrics of resilience is connection that we feel connected to one another, that we're willing, that we know each other, that we're willing to work together. And it doesn't matter how big or small that community is, um, the more in, engaged you are, the more present you are, right? The better your ability to be resilient, to connect with one another, to solve your problems together, to work through challenges. So I think you're modeling those kinds of things right here and you're right it's about relationships right and when you have good relationships and trust built then you're able to accomplish a lot together yeah uh, thank you i appreciate that thank you uh because i mean cause there are a lot, it's a lot of great people here that you meet like i i just mean like you said relationships i probably would never even met dr barlow if it wasn't for somebody that i knew from my hometown you know just just being very connected you know just learning from my mother who was very very connected or, or my father you know all of them they know they just very connected in our in our community, and especially my mom. She does so many things from being in from our church, and then from her doing her job, and then so many other hats she wear helping around her place. So I just you know just learn it from there, and bringing it to school, and trying to put that same type of you know environment everywhere I go. So that's kind of how that that works for me. But I, but I understand though that not everybody is that that social or even want to be that social. So that's why I feel like even trying to make that happen is in some way is not. In a way, I feel like it's not it's not realistic because it's not it's not that many people here that that would that would do it. I mean, because that that's the situation now is that it's not many people that would just come up and just talk to somebody like, like I would. 
So I, I mean, I was just, so if we find a way to make to get those people involved, I feel like that can really make this make it a total difference here, being a lot more social than it is now. So I agree with you, and yeah. I, and you're you're exactly right. Parents and grandparents, uh, churches, right, and and seeing what people do, how they connect people, and the the people they bring into your life, and parents and grandparents are the ones that initially do that in our lives, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and what a blessing that is. Uh, the people that they they connect you to and and you could you said it yourself it was through a friend that connected you with dr barlow mm. right that's so yep. about a lot of times we don't think about relationships as as changing people's lives right but they do someone introduces you to someone who becomes your wife or your or your partner somebody introduces you to one of your best friends right and or yep. it introduces you to a mentor so it's that's an important part of life. It's an important part, certainly for a first generation college student. I needed some help in making connections with professors and staff and and uh, and other students and anybody that was able to help connect me. Um, that made a huge difference in in my life. And certainly my parents and grandparents did the same for me, even though I didn't know it at the time. Uh, mm-hmm what they were doing, uh, those kinds of things are really important. And, and I think for first generation college students, even the position you have on campus, right? It's about connections and making connections. Yeah. With people. Uh, those connections are so meaningful. Yeah. And I'm glad I made them because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking to you today. So that's, <laughs> so I'm glad I made those connections. I, vice versa. I wouldn't either. So I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. I feel blessed about that as well. Uh, since we on the topic of just, uh, of being, you know, our, our environments and campus and how we were, uh, how would you say handling, you know, our failures too? You know, I mean, cause we, cause everybody goes through them. I mean, we both start and I doubt that any of us came, came to campus first year and was just on top of everything. And it was so great. So how do you, especially being in the position that you in now, like how, how are handling your failures or, and then basically being proud of those failures? Like how, how have you been able to, to take those in and, and, uh, and learn from those? You know, I think that's such a great point. And it's something that, that, that Kyron and I have talked a little bit about. But, um, you know, I think when you come to college for the first time as a first generation college student or any student, college is challenging and you're going to have some failures along the way. And that's part of learning. I think in we have uh, unrealistic expectations as students that we're going to be perfect and that the only way we can succeed at college is if we have a 4.0 grade point average and that we didn't do, you know, and that we were perfect in every way. Right. And that's, yeah. that's not realistic. And, and that's not even what we're trying to accomplish here. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, you're getting ready to graduate Karen, and that's a huge accomplishment. Right. And the goal is graduation. Um, but I know when I went through, uh, I struggled from time to time and, and, and didn't do as well and was lost, right? And it was people, it was professors that helped support me and, and, and other students um, and my parents and family that, that helped support me. Um, and, um, and so the idea is, is that when we're going through college, it's not to be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. It's that we're going to experience failure um, that we're going to learn from that failure and that, that, you know, learning is uh, one of the prerequisites of, uh, of, uh, um, of learning is that you're going to fail. And as Dean, I still talk, I talk to people, our, our faculty all the time about when I don't get a, a, a article, uh, accepted at a journal, or I don't get a grant accepted, uh, from, uh, from a funding agency, I go and talk to people about my failures so that they understand that failure is a part of life. It's not something to be ashamed of. Uh, and that it's something that if you're pushing the boundaries of your life, if you're pushing the boundaries of your mental limits or your physical limits, uh, you're going to experience failure. You and I both played a lot of sports, Karen. Uh, yeah. Probably a lot better than me, but I, uh, <laughs> I played my fair share as well. And I lost a lot and I got used to losing uh, and I won a lot as well, but I didn't feel like I was, um, you know, I guess the best way I would put it, Kyron, is when I lost, I saw it as an act of losing or uh, in school, I saw it as an act of uh, failing 
not as my identity that I was a failure or that I was a loser. Mm -hmm. And I think too many people, when they fail or lose at something, they, they, they make that a part of their identity instead of just an act. It's just something that happened. And, um, and if you look at the best sports athletes, and I can promise you, if you look at the best scientists and the best professors, they're failing regularly because they're pushing the boundaries that in higher education, we're extending the boundaries of new knowledge, new information, new ways of looking at things. That means you're going to fail uh, a lot of times before you succeed. Um, when we when we succeed, we celebrate that. But the same as a first generation college student or a college student in general, you're going to go through experiences if you're pushing yourself mm. and you're pushing yourself hard. I'm sure some of the rhetoric classes you were taking and some of the different courses, you pushed yourself, Kyra, right? Yes. And, and it's okay, right? And and I'm sure, um, you know, playing sports, you pushed yourself as well against the toughest competition and you weren't always successful. I think in when it comes to to then failure, I think in, in higher ed, we've got to get better at at being okay with failing and pushing ourselves to learn, grow, and get better. And there's no embarrassment or shame in, in not doing well uh, when you're pushing yourself. College is extremely difficult. As somebody who's earned you know, an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, and a PhD, the undergraduate degree is one of the toughest to get. It's a long degree, it's a tough degree to get. You experience a lot of challenges. Um, so when you get that degree, you don't, you, you don't wanna look back at it and say, well, you know, I didn't do it perfectly. You know, if you win the Stanley Cup or you win, you know, a world championship, you don't say, well, you know, we did lose some games along the way. No, you're like, hey, I'm proud of what I've accomplished. Uh, I've gotten, uh, you know, to somewhere and I've really pushed myself to get there. So you can tell, Karen, and, and you and I have talked a little bit about this. I think we're both passionate about, um, you know, overcoming failure, but also being OK with failure. What are your thoughts? I mean, you and I have talked a little bit about it, and I, I hope – how do you see it today? Uh, well, I came – so, like, when I started high school, I was – because baseball has been my whole life. You, anybody that you know that I grew up with tell you I've never – I never – it's never been a year when I wasn't playing baseball, when I wasn't doing something baseball 24-7, so ever since I was five years old. So when you – so when I get to a point where I get I get to a point where I, where I have to start – now really taking this serious and I'm not really understanding that that's when I start failing, which is started in high school. So I go from a point like that where I was always the better guy on the team. I was always the one, you know, the leader of the team. I was always that guy. I get to high school. Now it's like, wait, what? I got to do this now. What, what, what's this play? What is it? So like, even just from there, like just like, and that, and that, that put, that wasn't even just from sports. That's just from in school too. Cause now you get to high school. Now you're learning about different stuff from school and then you, you finally get used to that. And then you go to college and then it's like, okay, I thought I was fine. I thought it was, I thought it was gonna be fun. Cause see, you know, everybody senior high school is a cakewalk and yeah. you get straight into high, you get straight into college and you're like, wow, what is this? And even playing sports is this, you just start to fail all the time. At, at, at one point I got to a point where I was like, I, I don't even know if I want to play baseball no more. I don't even know if I want to, even lead, like, do I even what I want to do when I go after school? You know, it, it just kept, it just kept like building on top of me. So like, so yeah, for a while, failure. I, I never thought of failure as like a good thing. Like it was never like I, I never felt like I was learning something from. It. I just kept, I just feeling like, should I? Am I even supposed to be playing this? Am I? Am I? Am I even supposed to be doing this? Doing this major when I came to school? Because when I first came to UNLV, I was doing really bad when I first came here. I, it was very, it was decent at best, you know. And and I felt like, man, am I, am I supposed to? Like, did I come to the right school? Am I am I in the right environment? Did I make the right decision? Because I had I had a decision to stay home and play baseball, and then but I figured I said no, I'm gonna go out, try something new, and come to UNLV and and then play and try to play baseball out here. And then all of that, all my plans just went just went down, <laughs> you know. So that's but so yeah, but but now but now I see that and I'm like, well, I did all that happened for a reason because I wouldn't I wouldn't now I'm not taking things for granted. Now I understand what I need to know. And it's, and it's crazy, you know, you get to that point, you like, man, if I knew what I knew now, man, if I knew it then, it'd be so much, you know, but you, but I, I realized that, yeah, I'm proud that I, that I didn't understand that play. I'm proud I didn't, I didn't understand that class and I, and I failed it because I now, I, 
But now I come back and I'm like, oh, well, now I know what I need to do. I know that this major probably wasn't for me. I need to do a new one. And, oh, look, now I'm doing great now. Oh, now baseball was going really well. I knew that play. That, that play, I could never do it. But now I'm doing that in my sleep. Now that's, now that's routine now. So, like, so yeah, you're right. So learning from that has definitely made me a better person in general. You know, just how I, how I understand things or how I interpret certain things or how, how I'm listening to it. it you know, it, it comes up differently in my mind than what it used to. Yeah, I, I feel exactly the same way. And I didn't know it either at the yeah. time. But there were a couple people that reached out to me that said, you know, Rob, I didn't do very well, you know, and I didn't win every game or I didn't do it well in every uh, class that I took. But I persevered and I, I worked to learn and I, you know, started to, to develop skills that when I came up against tougher challenges later on in my life, I looked back on these previous challenges and said, hey, I can take the same approach, right? Yeah. And reaching out to people instead of just kind of uh, being by yourself uh, and it's not taking it personally, right? It's saying, yeah. hey, listen, I'm pushing myself hard here to succeed and that's going to come with some challenges and that's not going to be just all successes. Right. And, um, and, and when I reach those challenges, I may not always succeed, but I know I can persevere. Right. And yeah. that I'm going to be standing on that dais and I'm going to be getting my degree. Yeah. And if I start a business one day, right. Or if I am in a relationship, or I'm whatever it is, I'm going to have challenges, right? Yeah. Uh, I was telling my, my children, so Kyron, this is going to be hard for you to believe, uh, you know, <laughs> but I've been married 25 years. So when I would hear people being married for that long, I'd like, wow, that's crazy. And I'm sure there's people on this call that have been married much longer. And, but those aren't like perfect days. Every day is not just <laughs> one better than the next, right? <laughs> uh, there's challenges, right? But, but those are what help, you know, make the relationship good, right? And, and yeah. meaningful. And that's what makes the degree. The degree is not going to be your diploma, right? It's going to be all yeah. those memories, right? And hopefully we'll be in touch and, and you'll be in touch with your other professors and friends. And it's those kind of longstanding um, relationships that are really what it's all, what it's all about. But as you go through those things, right, when you look back at your baseball career or, or, or what have you, you're going you're gonna to look back at both the challenges that you overcame and then the things that really worked out well. And it sure makes it sweet um, when you're able to overcome those, those challenges. But, but the idea is you're going to have challenges. And yeah. uh, I think as a first-generation college student, when you experience those challenges, you said it so well. You start to question, you think, well, should I be here? And, and maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I don't have what it takes. And, and maybe I'm not smart enough or maybe, you know, whatever, or I don't have the right support system. But the reality is, is none of those things are true. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's what everybody experiences as they, as they go through, through college and, and, and go through relationships and marriages and things like that. So I think, you know, it's just really important that we talk about failure. Uh, you know, I think you and I, uh, you know, have shared stories about failure. My college uh, experience was not perfect. It was far from it. And at the time, I felt really bad about some of the things that had happened. Uh, and and I, it made me question myself from time to time. But I hope, you know, me sharing that with you, then, then, you know, you say, well, gosh, Dean Ulmer, right, seems to have done okay for himself. And it, and if I've had some challenges, that's maybe just the way it goes, right? It's like yeah. you've talked to any baseball player. They're going to talk to you about games they lost. They're going to talk about they struck out more than they hit, right? They've made yeah. errors, right? That's the nature of baseball. You can't talk to a baseball player that – but somebody new to baseball, if they're striking out two-thirds of the time – Right. They're going to be thinking, what's what's wrong with me? Right. I'm <laughs> doing it right. But somebody who understands baseball could say, hey, listen, if you hit a third of the pitches, you're actually doing really good. <laughs> <laughs> and you could talk to them about failure. And I think that's what we want to do here at UNLV. And I think what Dr. Barlow is looking for is 
we support one another and we, you know, and we, and we try to ensure that people really understand that if you're in putting yourself in a challenging situation as a, a first generation college student or as, or as a student, you're going to experience challenges. It's not going to be just success. And then here's ways that we can support each other and try to overcome those successes together. Mm. Uh, when you, you made me think you reminded me of a, uh, of a story of when you said relationships and failures and then trying to overcome them. It was a, uh, cause I, I'm very particular about time. I, I like it. If for some reason time and me, like I, I, I get real anxious in times. Like I, I, I would rather come to some hour early than be there like 20, you know, I, cause I, I'm so afraid of being late. Like I, I just hate like being late for something or, or even when I go to sleep, like I, I, I gotta go. If for some reason I get really tired at, at nine thirty ten, I gotta go to sleep at nine thirty ten o'clock. It happens every time. Or I, and then even when I go to sleep that late, I get up really early. And and even with things like getting me and playing baseball, I always felt I was running out of time because my whole goal when I got to high school was like, because I felt that my now think about it now, it's so crazy. It was like I was like, yeah, I'm gonna come out of high school, get drafted, I'm gonna be cool, I'm gonna get drafted, I'll be fine, I'll be good. You know, because I mean, because at because at a point in time, I was I was training with so many great high school athletes that I felt like that was, I was going to do the same thing they was doing. I was like, okay, but I, but I got to, but I had to remind myself with well, those was 18 and you came in and playing with them at 14, you know, you don't, you, you know, and in between all of that, you might miss something, you know? And I, and I realized that cause they knew more things than me cause I would just try to go on the field and just think that I knew it already. And then I didn't realize that I got to that point where I didn't, I didn't even make all conference. I didn't even make all state. I didn't even make, you know, I never made those, those things. And, and so when I finally got to uh, the Vegas and I didn't, make the team here in U at UNLV uh, and I started playing in the men's leagues. I met guys that had been there already. That were the dudes that, that got drafted out of high school. That were the guys that, that were, uh, that were in the league for a couple of years when I got to playing with them. And I, and I would tell them, I was like, man, I, I feel like I'm, I'm wasting my time. Like I, I, I'm, I think I had just turned 22 and I was like, man, like I'm 22 now. It's, it's guys in league right now. 22. They playing on the, they used to ask throws. Ronald Acuna is, is 20, is 20 years old. You know, Juan Soto just turned 21. They're like, man, they're like, relax, relax. You didn't even, you fine. I didn't even break the league till I was 25. I'm like, you, you fine. It's okay. Like, like it, it had, I had to be okay with, with like taking the path that I was going on because I, I didn't like it so much that I was now putting so much more pressure on myself that that turned into a failure. And you know, I didn't realize that I was putting so much extra pressure on myself that I was pushing myself to failure instead of success. So having that relationship with them, people that have been there. It kind of just put me in a position to be like, oh, well, I need to take a step back and realize, like, oh, wow, I'm, I should be, I should be not taking this for granted and start focusing on the fact that focus on my skill and and, and it'll come to me. You know that they'll say, no, you, I'm telling you, you figure it out right now. It's gonna come to you. Stop trying to rush there because the more you try to rush there, the more you're just gonna fall off in, in the failure. So, so like, so having relationships, like you said, is is really were a big thing for me to to shape how I am right now about just in general about just fa about failures. I'm, what I'm doing because it's, it's crazy because it was people before them that was telling me the same thing it, all the time. It tell me all the time, stop doing it. And it, it took me and it took me to a point where I was actually at the lowest where I was like, okay, now I'm gonna pay attention. I, and I hate that about myself because I'm like, man, they told me that before. Somebody told me that already and I should have listened. Yeah, it's so true. Our expectations of how fast things uh, should happen or the time in which they should happen, whether it's in sports or college or in life, right? Rather than things unfold is is so true. And college is such a great place to learn those things. It's such a privilege to be at a place where you can be surrounded by by people that that are knowledgeable around these ideas and can help support us. So that, that's a great example. And and it's it's uh, it, it's just a part of uh, um, you know supporting where we are in life, which is great. Mm. Which is why Kyron. I, I ended up choosing to live and, and kind of work at a place like uh, a university. I loved it so much. and felt So, <laughs> so, so yeah. I, I understand what you're saying for sure. Uh, uh, I got I actually wanted to ask this question earlier, but we kind of, you know, went into something else, but, uh, uh, but me, even me as being a, a minority uh, in America, I, I wanted to ask, especially you being, a, a, being in urban affairs, like, what do you view, is the role of the college, college of urban affairs in the time of you know Black Lives Matter and you know, protests and our and our current presidential status here? Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, it's incredibly important to us, right? Because in the college, we want to we want to develop solutions in our community, and uh, and so, Karen, as you know, we've got criminal justice and social work and 
communication and journalism, public policy, all in the college developing solutions around around these issues, right? And and you as a communication major, right? Um, I, maybe you could talk a little bit about what's happened in some of your classes and how you've been able to to speak and, and, and talk and make sense with your classmates and professors around some of these issues. We've, we've had some, some monumental issues, uh, you know, happen in the last, you know, since you've been a college student, right? Yeah. Um, how have we done as a, as a college in terms of, have you been able to have a chance to talk about some of these ideas in mm -hmm. class and, and what's that meant to you? Well, obviously, the more recent stuff we have because we haven't been to school. Uh, but um, but I would say when we had the October 1st incident uh, from that. So like that, uh, I would my, I had a teacher, um, uh, Miss Schiffman, who uh, who just canceled everything like in class. But she let us come in and just sit and talk because a lot of people were indirectly or directly affected by that. So everybody would, would sit in class and just share something of how they felt and what or if they had somebody that they was they were um, praying for at the time that was really hurting or and even even she had some people some family members she knew that that were uh, that were kind of hit by some shrapnel that was flying around and they, they were in the hospital so she had us all so she just canceled like all our material for class and we just sat there and we just talked the whole time in class about what whatever they were, who was feeling who was who, who needed to vent who needed to cry it was somebody that just sat there and cried the whole time people just you know sat there and let them just cry or she brought up some things of like how we can move forward or how we should or how we should um you know really understand the moment that w what just happened you know because a lot of us were just very confused of like like we don't even we didn't even because a lot of us i mean a lot of us were kind of were kind of uh taken the wrong way because they didn't because they some of them didn't like some didn't like the fact that we came back to school so fast and the others were so like even even in that moment you know for them to come there and let her just let them just vent that out like just yeah we want to i want to talk about that i'm mad right now or somebody was really sad or somebody was they wanted to ask her questions you know ask or even ask her how she felt because you know she was directly affected by it. So that was a, a great moment too in class to have that. Cause it was a lot of times we just can't, even if they got our second class is like that too. And uh and I think uh it was her and uh or or Chloe Chloe Powell, Miss Miss Dr. Yeah, Powell, she uh we would we would sit and just talk about like uh I don't know if you know who Donald Donald Glover is. He was he's a uh he's an artist that uh, go by childish Gambino. He had a song come out called This is America and it was a very subliminal but like in your face video about what was going on in America about people being about black unarmed black men being killed and, and even heard we just analyzed that whole video for a whole class and we sat there and talked about that so that's great that we had an opportunity to do that with her because she because she's always like that she always anything that's going on in the culture or just in in general in America she always gets to sit down and talk about that so I think that's that's great to have in in our communication um college for sure because there's a lot of teachers that are definitely like that who would sit down and do even uh dr bloomfield as well who would sit down and talk to us about this so yeah you feel like you've been able to express yourself and how you feel and, and how you see some of these issues as well Thank yes you. yeah sure because it's times i came to class and i was really mad about certain things and i would and i would go in there and, and just be like well this is making me mad and this and that and this and then and then there'd be somebody else like yeah me too man don't you feel like that? and then now we're having a whole conversation or somebody disagreed and we'll sit there and then she'll stop and say, well, why do you disagree? Why do you feel like that's, cause I, I that reminds me of Dr. Tagano, Tagano, uh, she, uh, we had a class with her where uh, two students got, got, a, got in the back and forth in a, I, I want to say argument, it was definitely a debate cause they, they didn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't heated, but they both were very agree to disagree type of situation. So to even allow that, have somebody else have a different opinion on what everybody else is saying and let that be heard as well in the class was a good thing too. So I, I always felt like it, we, it was nothing to be able to hold back. It was always, we were always able to express ourselves. Well, it's really important to me. And I think it's really important to the college that, that we have conversations around really important issues uh, and that we try to develop solutions together around these issues uh, that we don't shy away from them. Uh, and that everybody has an opportunity to speak and engage and, and, and express how they feel about, uh, about what's going on in the world. They're challenging issues, but I think universities need to be at the forefront. And, and it can't be just professors. It's got to be students and, and everybody working together uh, with our communities uh, to figure out how to move forward together. And yeah. so, you know, universities have to be places of sense making and, and tolerance and understanding uh, but then we have to model the right kinds of things. So I'm glad you've had a good experience. Uh, 
And, yeah. you know, we'll be leaning on you and others as we move forward to, you know, to, to do everything we can to model the right kinds of things um, and to develop the kinds of the, the kind of future that we're all going to be proud of. Mm. Uh, I want to bring up a question that was in the chat, actually. I can't remember who, who it was from, but I, I, did, I did remember reading it. She asked, uh, uh, how much pressure do you feel of, of being a dean? I think that's what she asked, all right? Yeah. Uh, pressure in what way? I mean, there's all kinds of pressure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, I feel I don't feel pressure. I feel responsibility. Uh, and, uh, and this is Monica, I think, asking the question. I just feel such a responsibility that Every student that comes to the to the college has a has a great experience, feels supportive, uh, feels like they have the resources they need, that every faculty member and staff member feels the same way. Um, and that's a heavy responsibility. It's one I I uh, I, I take uh, and I'm and I'm proud to have. Um, but um, so I don't see it as much as pressure as just responsibility. I know how important it is um, to get a great education um, and to, I know what it's like as a first generation college student um, to try to, to try to earn that education and, and what it takes to, what support it takes for, for every student to, to get that. And then on the faculty and staff side, uh, you know, I look at it as, you know, one of the things I tell people is that you spend the most of your time with at work, um, not with your family, not with your friends, not, you know, uh, if I look at my own life, uh, I get up relatively early, probably five in the morning, I go to the gym and then I'm here at the office by about seven and I'm usually here till about six. And, and then I see my kids, you know, for a little bit of time uh, in the early evening when they don't have soccer and dance and other kinds of things, we spend some time together. And so, it's so important that the people that come to work, the faculty and staff, have a great experience as well because they're spending the majority of their life here uh, mm. with us. So uh, it's uh, it's not um, it's not pressure for me, but it's responsibility, and it's something that I can do everything I can to to make an impact uh, and and to do what I can to help support people. Uh, and give them what I needed when I was uh, when I was a student and a faculty member. So it was a great question, um, but uh, uh, but it's something that gets me up early and 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 keeps me on my toes all day. Uh, and then when you see a great student like Kyron and, and others mm. that are on the, on the panel, right, you feel really good. And and uh, and, and you know, in, in Kyron's case, what I would tell him is that I would. Uh, you know, you're when you graduate from a university as well, you don't leave the university as well either, right? You're a, a member of that group yeah. forever, right? So that's another yeah. night. You're a part of those relationships for a, for a long time as well. So, um, so those relationships start early. You know, we look at we have debate camps and and we're recruiting you know students to come to college in middle school. So we're developing relationships there, and we're hoping to maintain those relationships. Uh, throughout the rest of people's lives. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, we have another question uh, from Kimberly Wong. She says, uh, as a first generation, did you ever have questions or ideas but did not know who to go ask? How did you overcome these times and what do you recommend? Kimberly, all the time. I, I never... <laughs> <laughs> I, and I felt like, I can't believe, you know, and so, you know, I would just, I would just start asking people. And, and, and Kimberly, I would be sent all over the place many times uh, and in the wrong directions. Uh, but sooner or later, I would find the right people. And along the way, even though I was sent in the wrong directions, I'd meet some great people. And then what I did as a college student, what is, I try to do is, as what I do as dean is, is when a student needs help or somebody, I take them directly and I, I connect them with who they need to be connected with. And um, so that they don't have to have all those false starts and along the way. But but yes, I I never knew who to ask. I was always intimidated for some reason to asking those people until I started to meet professors and um, and meet people. And I started to and I, I learned that they're just people. 
they're just they're regular people and um and so that was that was really uh a good breakthrough for me but yep i never knew who to ask i was always intimidated but and i was always sent all over the place but i always found my way and i was persistent in in getting the answer that i needed so you're saying you would recommend just them to just ask questions right away yeah absolutely okay. Ask questions and, and don't preface it with, you know, this may be stupid or, you know, because we do that sometimes. <laughs> I, I, that's, I, that's yeah. I've done that many a time being nervous. Yeah, I, this might be a dumb question, but. Uh, yeah. I just <laughs> yeah. asked and I asked and um, and and I, I, I was humble. So so like Kyron, I, I was a pretty good athlete. Uh, and so that came to me easy and I and so I had some successes there um, and I wasn't very humble uh, when I was in in athletics but then when I had to when I came to college I had to really be humble and I didn't know a lot of things and I couldn't do certain things and that was good for me it was good for me um, to to uh, to be humble and to and to have a learner's mentality and I think that helped me all the way through my college I never felt like I always had the answer or I always knew the right answer. Um, but, but it, it made me humble and it made me learn and I knew I had to work to get to where I needed to go. Okay. Yeah. Come to uh, the end. Oh, what you say? You've got, uh, if you've got questions, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was just going to uh, say off of what you just said. Um, Cause I was from, from my own experience too, what I would recommend other people to do. It's like it's yeah, like I mean, this whole conversation what we've been having is make connections immediately. Try to make a connection, you know, and not, you know, try to try to find. I mean, because I know when I first, if you ask Dr. Barlow, she'd tell you if I had came here the first time, like I was supposed to, I probably wouldn't have all them questions in the first place because I took forever to finally come meet her. I, I had known about her before I even came to UNLV, but I never actually came to, to come see her. And 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 the time that I did, I realized that wow, I, I could have been doing this a lot earlier, but. Uh, but I always felt like I, I got here at the time that I did for a reason. Like I went through all that before for a reason to come in and finally be here and be in, and meet her. And then ever since then, I've been doing great uh, having that connection with her and, and just the whole intersection and Dr. Marrero and Miss Cynthia, everybody just being here. So just so, yeah, just even besides like as a question, just try to make a connection somewhere, a relationship with somebody that you can go back and forth to. Yep. And when you have those connections, help connect other people yeah right so once you've made those connections help other people get connected that that's a really important and critical thing and it's something i spend a lot of time doing is connecting people mm. right getting them connected to one another um and helping support them one of the things i hear every week uh, i promise you this is someone will reach out to me and say you know rob you you told me to meet so and so and we're best friends now we're best <laughs> <laughs> And I'm, that makes me feel so good. Uh, and and making those connections for first generation and for all students and for faculty and staff is just critical. All right. So uh, I've been notified. We got ten minutes left. So uh, um, so I'm probably. If anybody has any other questions, uh, oh wait, we do. Another question from Kimberly Wong here. Okay. Uh, she says uh, during these COVID times, how do you recommend continuing to make connections virtually? Kimberly, I you know I think. You know, by telephone, by like we're doing um, here through uh, uh, WebEx or through Zoom or through uh, whatever means you possibly can. Sometimes even with, um, you know, with a mask, you can uh, you can you can connect with people. And um, but I I can tell you that you know today I'm going to have numerous different ways of getting together. One's going to be by telephone, a couple by WebEx, one in person. Um, but I, I hope, uh, you know, people will, will keep reaching out to one another and keep engaging with one another. I think it's, it's so important. Kyron, do you have any thoughts on the issue? Uh, I mean, we, we, I, I know what I do with, uh, with my teachers. We, she does have office hours. Like, like, so like I was able to, um, just get on a meeting with her and like, do, like basically how we doing right now, Google meets like that too. I mean, that's, I mean, you pretty much touched them all. I like touched every, every uh, part of it, but, uh, but yeah, that or email or pretty much being connected in that way. Uh, even, even uh, social media sometimes like, uh, cause I know, uh, cause me working with the industry, 
section and being with the men, uh, the tips mentors, we go on Instagram and we put up uh, different things to keep us in, engaged with students and like showing them like what's, I actually made a video of uh, when we first, when we first came back on campus about what we, like how campus was going to be and how it was going to look and what we need to do when we came on campus at that point. So I've done things like that. So that's another way that we kept in touch too to put that out there. Just find ways to connect with people. Yeah. So important. Um, Pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to say, but since we, uh, I think it's like we have five minutes now, I wanted to uh, come here and just, uh, and just appreciate you for, for coming out here and, be, uh, and being available for this interview because I, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of students here don't really know their deans. I mean, I did not even know. I didn't even know you were the dean until they told me when you came in that day. So, and then you said, you was like, "Oh, you're on my list." I was like, "Oh, that's you." Okay, you know. So, I, I never. So, it's great that like that you came out here to be able to just you know and just talk and just answer questions for people because not a lot of us even know or even or even even that even crosses their mind even talk to their dean and don't realize that some of these questions that they had on their mind and didn't didn't think that it needed needed to be answered. But when they hear it, it's like, okay, I'm glad our dean came out to, to express himself to us and let us know like what's on his mind and what what's his goal for us as students here. Absolutely. I'm I'm really happy to do it and I'm happy, really happy to be connected uh, with you, Kyron. I think the world of you and I, I hope you'll connect me to more students and, and we can do more of these uh, for other students that that want to reach out to me, please feel free to to do that. Um, it's it's really fun and and uh, and great to be connected to all of you. And mm -hmm. if I can help out in any way, I I would love to. Um, and uh, and I look forward to being connected with this group. I've told Dr. Barlow, I just I'm so happy that that she and her team are are doing this and are working with first generation college students. And, and I, I'll help and support in, in every way possible. I'm so excited about um, this initiative and the people that are a part of it. And I feel as, you know, like one of you. So uh, I'm happy to, uh, to be engaged. Uh, and I, it's just been fun to connect with you, Kyron. I think we've got a lot in common. And so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, our yeah, the whole interaction, how we first met is, is so funny to me because I was trying, I was trying to be very modest in the room and then, you know, and then Dr. Morero would come out and say, oh, well, he, he's on the dean's list. He's in the college urban affairs. And then you pop up out of nowhere and say, oh, that's my list. That's mine. <laughs> in, the, in the couple of minutes that we have left, uh, I just want to extend to you, uh, Dean Elmer, my sincere appreciation, uh, not only for this interview, but for all of the support and assistance that you have given the intersection since we literally opened our doors. Uh, trust me that that one phrase that you said about pressure versus responsibility, I am going to use that again. You may come into the intersection and actually see that plastered somewhere because certainly that is one of the things that is extremely important to me and to those of us who work in the intersection is that we all do feel a responsibility to uh, be a the most service and support to our students. And so I just want to once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this. Um, and if I might, uh, I, I'm sure that I, I uh, even though I, I can't see them, I have a feeling that Kyron has a, um, a fan base out there listening to, to him this, this morning that is extremely proud and uh, I just want to say to them, thank you for letting us walk this path with him. And uh, I just, and thank you all for, for coming here this morning. Um, this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I really so very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barlow. Thank you, Kyron. Well, appreciate it, everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored to honored to do this. I'm thank y'all for for choosing me to be able to talk to Dean Omer. It was a long awaited conversation, so I'm glad that we finally got to sit down today and and really and really have a great conversation. Yeah. Yep, and I know Dr. Barlow. In November, we're going to have a series of events for for first generation college students, and and we'll be doing things throughout the year as well. But uh, we're really excited about that and very supportive as well. Yes, yes, that is uh, starting November sixth. It's a campus-wide celebration for first-generation students, and there are some wonderful activities that have been planned. I am so, once again, very, very thankful and appreciative to the campus at large for 
their enthusiastic uhness in, in, in getting involved in this activity. So and yeah, as usual, Urban Affairs is coming through. So we really appreciate that. We really appreciate that. We're excited. We're excited about it. And and as a first generation college student, just so honored uh, you know, to be dean of the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs. I know many of you are wondering kind of where are you going to go and what are you going to be? It's, uh, it's always amazing and surprising uh, what opportunities, you know, a college education will get you. And so uh, it'll be fun to hear your stories and, and uh, to do Zoom chats with you uh, in future years to hear what great things all of you are doing and, and the responsibilities that you'll have at those times. So I'm excited to hear about those things and, and to learn from you as well. Thank you again so, so very much. And yes, we will be getting back in contact with you soon, I'm sure. But thank you so much, Dean Omer. All right. Send Thanks my mom for so something in the chat, too. Look. Yeah, <laughs> 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 shout out to my to my family, to everybody. Well, I see my uncle, my uncle didn't got in here too. I see my uncle Rod in here. So I thank y'all. I love y'all for the support. I'm glad y'all was on the on the whole time with me to, to watch me interview the, the Dean. I appreciate it. I love all y'all. Thank you. That's awesome. Incredible. Thank you again. Bye. Bye-bye.